Productivity Arata. Whenever we are experiencing a serious crisis, we can look for established methods to keep our productivity high. And one of the most reliable methods that you can use in times like this is Stoicism. 2,300 years ago, in ancient Greece, a philosopher named Zeno created a school of thought called Stoicism. The main idea was that our emotions can harm both our thinking and also our action, and therefore, in order to remain focused, we all should act on the basis of the three pillars of becoming unshakable, the removal of passions, and the acceptance of reality as it is. Can you see how these three pillars are perfect for overcoming a crisis? An unshakable mind, action free of passions, and acceptance of reality. If you're not disturbed by what is happening outside, you can produce better. And if you don't let your passions disturb your mind, you will also do better. And also if you accept reality as it is, you will produce better. So this is very simple to understand, but how can you actually apply these ideas in your real life, in your daily life? That is why we're here to present you some very simple stoic techniques that will increase your productivity and that can be used especially now in times of crisis. Put intention in your day. A quick reflection in the morning ensures that you will have a productive day. In the previous episode of the Productivity Arata series, we talked about how living one day at a time can help you through periods of crisis. You can put intention into your day by doing a quick morning reflection. And as soon as you wake up, even before you pick up your cell phone to see the notifications, you can just enjoy the morning calmness and take a few minutes to reflect on what are you going to be doing in that particular day. Take pen and paper and write down the three most important things that you're going to do that day. Plan how you will be doing these tasks and how you will avoid the obstacles that are very likely to arise during the day. This simple exercise can completely change the way that you look at each day. Early in the morning, your mind is clearer and you can write without being contaminated by events and the news of the crisis. You can take advantage of this unique moment and then you can define early on how productive your day will be. You can just imagine what the best version of yourself would be like. You can list all the features that this new version would have and work intentionally to achieve all of them. In a morning reflection, you planned what your ideal day would be like. So how about imagining what the ideal person would be like? What would be your best version of yourself? Of course, the ideal person does not exist and you will never reach perfection. But having a good description of what that person would look like, would be like, that will serve as a guide for you to walk where you want to go. Even if you don't get there, well, you will have put yourself on the right path. What qualities would the best version of yourself have? What habits would you have acquired? And which ones would you have to give up to become this best version? What personal values would that person cultivate? These are all complex questions that lead to great self-knowledge, and making a list of people that you admire can help a lot. They can be either real or fictional people, from the past or from the present. When you list these people, ask yourself why do you admire them? What qualities do they have that you would like to have? And how can you acquire these qualities? And once you have this list, think about how you can actually begin to acquire each of these qualities and then start intentionally taking action to bring the qualities that you most admire into your own life. You can take a few minutes to be alone. Cultivate silence to organize your thoughts and improve your actions. One of the big problems with a crisis is that it seems to be everywhere. You take out your cell phone and, you know, everybody's there talking about a crisis. The press only brings news about the crisis, and even your friends just talk about that. This bombardment of negative information ends up contaminating your mind and impairing your productivity. As you only think about this information, you are unable to focus on work, and you don't produce as well as you would like to. And one way out of this is to take a few moments during the day to be alone and silent. Whenever you feel that the amount of information is too high and your productivity is too 
low, too poor, you can take a few minutes to calm down your mind. In that time alone, you can do a meditation using whatever technique that you find most appropriate to you. Or you can simply reflect on why you're feeling that way, why your focus is not so sharp, uh, why you're not managing to produce. These are three things you can remember during this reflection. First, you remember the way you interpret things is much more valuable than the events themselves. Your reaction to the fact is more important than the fact. Then also remember that the world is always changing. There is not much that you can do about it. And lastly, remember, you will not live forever. If you have trouble doing this type of reflection, try writing about these thoughts in a journal. And when you take those moments to be alone, open your diary and start writing about what you're feeling. The simple fact of writing will give your thoughts a certain structure because writing is a much more linear expression than just having thoughts. Peel your problems like an onion until you get to the heart of the matter. Focus on solving just that core and then all the other problems will disappear. Every problem we face brings many layers, just like an onion. We usually get stuck on the surface layers and we fail to address the core of the problem. But if we manage to solve the core of the problem, all the other associated layers also disappear. So in order to do that, you can use the onion technique. Imagine that one of the problems that you're facing right now is like an onion with many layers. Now imagine yourself peeling off each of these layers to get to the center, to the core of the problem. Layers are like the, the things that we bring along with the problem. It's not the problem itself. For example, we often fail to solve a problem more directly out of fear of what other people will think of us because we don't want to break a social rule or simply because we're afraid of failing. So all these fears, they are the extra layers. They're just things that we ourselves added to the problem itself. And by leaving all of this aside and focusing on solving the problem in a more direct way, all these fears will also be resolved. Think of everything that could go wrong. Defining your own fears is more important than defining your goals. And one of the biggest names in Stoicism is Seneca, who created a very useful technique in times of crisis, pre-meditation on evil. The name seems a little bit complicated, but the exercise is quite simple. It's, it goes a little bit like this. You must think about everything that could go wrong when you're going to be doing something. And then you find what your fears are. This technique assumes that defining your own fears is more important than defining your goals. Being clear about your fears is essential to understanding your own emotions and doing so despite your fear. We suffer more from the fears that exist in our mind than from the real dangers that life actually presents us with. So by defining your fears, you can distinguish between what you can control and what is out of your control. And you learn to focus only on what you can control. That's right. The exercise is relatively simple. You must analyze and describe in detail the worst case scenarios. The things that you're most afraid of in life that are preventing you from taking action to achieve your greatest goals. Three steps here to define the worst case scenario. You have to list your biggest fears, imagine what might happen, and consider the cost of downtime. The pre-meditation on evil exercise should be done in three steps. The first step is called what if I, and then you must draw three columns on a sheet of paper and define in the first column your 10 biggest fears, the 10 worst things that could happen in your own life. In the second column, you write down 10 ways to prevent each of these 10 biggest fears. You must answer the question, what can I do to prevent these scenarios from happening or to at least decrease their likelihood of happening, even if slightly? And finally, in the third column, you write down 10 ways to resolve each one of these 10 biggest fears, should they ever happen. And to do this, you have to answer the question, if the worst case scenarios happen, what can I do to repair the damage? Even if so, slightly. What what, what, who can I talk to? Who can I ask for help? For example, let's say that your biggest fear in life is getting sick. So you write this in the first column. In the second column, you write down what could you do to avoid getting sick. And in the third column, write down what would have to do in case you actually become really ill. 
The second step is to answer the following question. If I take action, despite of fear, what can be the benefits of an attempt even if I have partial success. This second step gives us clarity about what the benefits can be if we are minimally successful in our attempt to act despite fear. And the third and final step is called the cost of inactivity. You must write what it would cost you emotionally, physically, even financially if you give in to fear and you don't take action. First, write down what inaction would cost you in the next six months. Then, in one year. And finally, what that inertia will cost you in three years from now if you don't take action. See, we are very good at imagining what can go wrong if we try to do something, but very few of us can think exactly and clearly what can happen if we don't do something. And the third and final step is called the cost of inactivity. You must write what it would cost you emotionally, physically, even financially, if you give in to fear and you don't take action. First, write down what inaction would cost you in the next six months, then in one year. And finally, what that inertia will cost you in three years from now if you don't take action. See, we are very good at imagining what can go wrong if we try to do something, but very few of us can think exactly and clearly what can happen if we don't do something. Every decision that we make, whether to do or to not do something, has a cost. The third step aims to make clear what the cost is. Use the three pillars of stoicism to get out of crisis. Have an unshakable mind. Don't be carried away by emotions. And accept reality as it is. A serious crisis shakes our mind. It makes us act based on strong emotions and brings that desire for reality to be different from what it really is. In other words, a serious crisis shakes the three pillars of stoicism at once, becoming unshakable, the removal of passions, and the acceptance of reality. In today's conversation, you learned a number of techniques to reinforce these pillars. All of these techniques are based on self-knowledge and being clear about your feelings and your thoughts and, and to understand how all of this will be affecting your actions, your choices. To keep your productivity high, even in times of crisis, you can apply what you have learned here to get to know yourself better and thus to prevent your mind from being so disturbed by the external events. And this way you can make more rational decisions and, accepting reality as it is, act in the best possible way to get out of the crisis. Stoic practices are very useful in facing crises, but they are not the only techniques that you can apply to keep your productivity high even in difficult times. If you are having trouble finding time to produce more and better during the times of crisis, I invite you to attend a special class on Productivity Ninja course on time management. Time management. And to access this special class, you can just go to the link arata.se forward slash time management.